All right, so our next passage is in correlation to this. I'm not going to reread all these verses that we've read by justification, but it's clear Paul is teaching that we're saved by faith. We're justified by faith, not by works. Our works can't save us. Our works are filthy. They're, they're like a, a filthy rag to the Lord. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing we can do to merit righteousness. There's none good, no, not one, none is righteous. We've all turned away from God. We, we're all in rebellion against God until God does a work in our hearts. But, and I don't say but in the, in the negative sense, but there is those, even Martin Luther, who believed that the book of James should not be in the Bible. Because when he was given the task to study, which drew, drew him away from the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church uh, at the time was he was given Romans. He was given these doctrinal books to study out. And he's digging into them and saying, man, this is not what we're doing as a church. So let me throw up the 95 Thesis to correct these things. Not I'm trying to split it. I'm not trying to create Lutheranism. I'm, not trying, to, I'm trying to correct the errors within the church. Uh, and then we see the whole Reformation. You know, uh, he wasn't the first one. But he was one and a big instrument in kind of getting the Reformation to just spark off and take, take, take fire. But he's reading James, and he had an issue with this because James says man is not justified by works. Or he says, you see that a person is not justified by works and not, or justified by works. A man is justified by works and not by faith alone. So what is James saying? Is James in contradiction to Paul? Is he head shaking? So, I would agree, no, there's not a contradiction here. But what is then, what is being stated here? So when we look at James 2, 14 through 26, and it says, What good is it, my brothers, when someone says he has faith? And this is going to correlate. If you was here, uh, as Pastor said, you guys went through John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2. And, and all through 1 John, you're getting these tests of what a biblical Christian looks like. Here's a test to know if you're, you're, you're a Christian. Right? And so this is exactly what James is doing. James is, is, we look at the Old Testament and we look at Proverbs and we say this is wisdom literature. The book of James is New Testament Proverbs. It's New Testament wisdom literature. And he says, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith, but he does not have works? You claim to be a Christian, but you have no fruit. You claim to be a Christian, you have no works. He's saying, can that faith save him? Right? So... What he's not saying, and we're going to continue, but what he's not saying is, you're not, he's not referring to a justification here for one's salvation. He's saying, you claim to be a Christian, you claim to be one of these, but you have no works. You have no fruit, right? He says, can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. James is saying, you can say you have faith, but if you don't have works, you have dead faith. You don't have saving faith. You don't have real life faith. Faith. You have a dead faith. He says it's dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. He says, show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Genuine faith in Christ produces action. This is what James is saying, that because of my faith, there's action. You tell me you're a believer and you have no fruit, you have no works, it's dead faith. You, have, you, don't, you don't have genuine faith. And this is what Paul is laying, or not Paul, but uh, James is laying out. He said, uh, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe. And we know everyone knows God exists. Romans 1 tells us that, right? So everyone knows God exists, but they don't fear God. That's what he's saying here. But the demons, they do fear God. They know he's real. They believe him. They do fear God. Um, he says, even the demons believe, and they shudder. He says, do you want to be shown, or, do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham, father justified by works? Now wait, we read, Paul writes that Abraham was justified by faith. Before circumcision, why was why was Abraham counted as righteousness? Because he believed. Because he believed. It was his faith, right? So, 
But so what, what James is doing is he's speaking on, a, on a, a, a level of not the justification for someone's salvation, but the evidence for someone who claims to be justified. This is what the evidence produces within a person. And so he's speaking in this, in this way. He says, was not Abraham the father justified by works? When he offered up his son Isaac on the altar, you see that faith was active along with his works. So he had faith, and because of his faith, it's producing action. He trusted God. And, and that's, a, that's a thing, you know, I didn't want to get too deep into that, but when you think about Abraham going to sacrifice his son, the trust that he had in God, now this is pure speculation, but I think when we look at the text, we can say, he says to the men, he has his son Isaac take the wood to carry his own wood that he was going to be burnt in this burnt offering for. And he asks, and he says to the men, you stay here, we will return to you. I think that's kind of telling. Abraham saying, we will return. So whether or not he did or he didn't, it seems to indicate, and again, this is speculation on my part, I'm acknowledging that, but it seems to indicate he knew that him and his son was going to return. This was his only son that God promised was going to be the seed, this line where the descendants would exceed the stars in the sky and the sand on the sea. And so he's having this great faith. He's going with his son and his son. I see we have the wood. I see we have what we need for this. But where's the offering? And what does Abraham say? The Lord will prepare. The Lord will bring, provide the offering. So it seems to indicate, I think, I don't think I'm off track here, seems to indicate that Abraham trusted God was going to do something. Whether that, whether it was he thought he was going to sacrifice his son and God was going to raise him from the dead, or that he was going to do what he did by providing a ram that was caught in the, in the thistles, in the thicket. Right? But this is what James is saying. Abraham believed him. It says, And Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You know, uh, then you see in verse 24, it says, you see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Okay, so that phrase right there is what causes the tension, causes the, the where we're trying to see this conflict. But there really is no conflict between James and Paul. He's speaking on a way, on, in, a, in a way in which, look, if you claim to be a Christian, again, as I've stated this already, but you don't have any works, you're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself. And he says, and in the same way, verse 25, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so faith apart from works is dead. So what James is saying is, look, you can claim to have faith, but if your faith does not produce works, you have dead faith. And how do we see this? We see this played out. When we watch our brothers and sisters in Christ who are in other areas of the world, who are willing to die for their faith, they're putting their faith in action, right? Because it's a product of their faith. They can do nothing but do with what they believe. We see it with the apostles in, in, the, in the book of Acts. And they say, stop speaking of this man, Jesus. And they want to put him out there. They beat him and send him out. And they say, we can't. We can't stop speaking of what we know. They count the cost. Their faith produces an action, right? So when somebody says they believe, but they're not willing to act upon what they believe, right? Do we really trust? It's like, uh, I've never done it. Have you guys jumped out of airplanes before in our... Okay, so when you jump out, you trust that air, that parachute's going to open, right? This is the kind of trust we're talking about. Like, you're not just sitting there like, eh, I don't know if this thing's going to work. No, I trust it's going to work when I jump out. So I know that's like an analogy I'm trying to use here, and those can always break down. But that's the kind of faith we're talking about. You have faith in God that he's going to do what he said, Right? So James is, is kind of working this out in a practical sense, just like the book of Proverbs is practical wisdom. You know, it's wisdom from God, but it's practical that even an unbeliever can look at it when it comes to finances, when it comes to relationships and say, yeah, if we apply these things, we're going to be better off. James is saying, look, practically, you claim to have faith. If you don't have works, your faith is dead. Not that you're justified by works, but you have dead faith. All right, any thoughts, questions, comments?